Welcome to the Women 2.0 In Conversation series. I'm Jasmine Hupp. Today we're speaking with Wendy Leah, who is an accomplished entrepreneur, corporate executive, and angel investor. She recently joined Get Satisfaction as their CEO. What's a mistake that you made earlier in your career that you don't want others to repeat? I think the biggest mistake I've made in leading and CEOing um, many different startups is just making assumptions that you understand something about the product or the market or the customer. So the biggest uh aha for me is just don't make assumptions. Ask, seek clarification, confirm that you understand. So it's a series of mistakes that catch up with you. Right, and there's something about the human nature relative to professional efforts that sometimes prevents young or experienced professionals from just saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Help me, right? Go back over that. That language or that technical attribute or that customer reference is not clear to me. And if we would all get more comfortable doing that early and do it often, I think mistakes are prevented all over the place. It's easy for me to jump to a conclusion, right? And what keeps me now from jumping to conclusions is being very vulnerable and saying, I don't really understand. Talk to me about what happened, why it happened, what that word is you're using I've never heard before, how that fits with this. So just taking the time to seek clarification will serve all entrepreneurs well. As an angel investor, what advice do you have for founders who are looking for startup capital? A person with an idea, a professional with an idea, the most important thing they should do first is research the idea completely, comprehensively, make sure that they have talked to people that would actually use or and consume the product or service. And if that sound and been thought through, not in a formal market research way, but if there's thinking behind that and research behind that, then, you know, it's not that, it's not that hard. It takes time, right? And you have to have some connections, but that strategy can be put together as long as the idea is well thought, well thought through and innovative. I just believe that, and especially here because it's the nature of what goes on here, right? Um, but if you've never raised money before, I, mean, I haven't raised a lot of money, right? I mean, I've helped people raise money, but I haven't like done that on my own a lot. It can seem intimidating, right? Because it went, ugh. Because they all, you know, they're all sit there smiling at you, but like, you know, do you really like it? Do you want it? How, you know, how are you gonna make that? It's, it's a little overwhelming, um, but not impossible. So someone who's going to have the courage and creativity and the commitment to come up with a well-thought-through idea, they're going to get some money, right? They, they are. It just might take a little longer than they think. And they should be as planful about that as they are about researching and de- developing the product, right? And I think that's what happens. They treat it tactically. And then they get their knickers in a twist and all anxious about it. Well, I can't find money. Well, did you put as much thought into finding money as you did in creating the idea? What are your influences? My greatest influence is fresh air and nature, right? That's where I find the most peace, I think, right? Um, If it's just a walk to the train or I'm a cyclist, I'm not a great cyclist, but just a nice bike ride. Um, you know, watching the ocean do what it does and the weather patterns move. That, you know, that's a big influence on me because it represents things out of your control, right? It represents kind of the beauty of all things alive. So I'm very influenced by that. So when I get in a mood or a snit, you know, I'm like, okay, where can I, where can I go get some different kind of influence, right? By watching you know, nature do its work, right? Because it's just so sublime how that happens. So that is on the esoteric side. Um, Other influences for me are, you know, just like everyone else, there have been, you know, two or three people in my life, personally and professionally, that have had huge impacts on me, 
huge. Um, and because I either worked for them or worked with them, and there's hardly a day, interestingly enough, hardly a day that those two or three people don't come up in my mind. I either think, how would they react? Uh, how would they parse out their knowledge? Um, how would they take a break from this? How would they learn more? I mean, I, so it, it's nice to be at this stage in life and really have those people in your, you know, clearly in your mind as your guidepost. What's your advice for women in business? I, I've never been one, frankly, in the past to say, you know, women should think about this and men should think about that. It's only recently, honestly, that I've become aware of that. And maybe it's a generational thing because the, in doing my work, I was always mainly with men and not women. And so you just block out the difference because that's a way to survive. It's interesting. So now... I am learning that indeed that there are certain um, strategies and approaches that can be naturally delivered by women that help a lot. One is to be, to, to recognize that the female part of you is a good part, right? That is the sensitive part. That is the part that wants to know, that cares, that expresses that care. Don't mask that, right? If indeed that is a part of natural you know, naturally a part of you. Don't mask that. So be that, right? Accept that. Respond to it. Honor it. Not in a airy-fairy way, but I think when you mask it is when you kind of lose yourself, right? And perhaps I did that along the way because I felt like I needed to, but the, the older and wiser I get, the more I say, that is it, right? So you can expect that from me because I am sensitive. And business is not just business. It is a lot of personal stuff, too. Right? And don't let anyone tell you it's not. right? Because we don't come in the door right, and just decide, okay, now we're in business. We are first human, which is filled with all these personal dimensions. And then we come in and we apply that humanness to our work. right? And so I think all of us that are women that have that good fortune, Right, to be that gender in a workplace, have to recognize that there are real advantages to that, real advantages, and that you don't have to exploit them or tart them up. You just have to be with them and notice how they impact work, how they impact culture, how they impact success. And once you get in the flow of that, it's, it's amazing how much more natural it becomes that your application of your gender becomes. It doesn't feel like it's a formula. And so that's a long-winded way of saying that I do think there's something now that I've learned about the application of that a little bit more consciously, but equally authentically. And I think I have been able to garner some advantage from that. And I'm just okay with that advantage. What did you think you were gonna be when you grew up? Do you know what I thought I was going to be, honestly, is I decided I was going to be like a fashion designer. Now, I'm from the South, Mississippi, so we don't have many fashion designers down there, right? And I went to a very public, you know, college, you know, and that seemed, you know, the choices for me were, the obvious ones were, okay, be a really good mom, full-time, be a good secretary or a good nurse or a good teacher, and it's interesting, and business was kind of, I loved business always, you know, I, I loved it, but I wasn't sure why I did, but that seemed too boring to say. It seemed as boring as be a mom at the time, because I'm, you know, it just didn't, didn't interest me, so I thought, well, if I was a fashion designer, then I could do business around that craft, right? Then I could design stuff, and I could have a business around it, but that sound better than just be in business. Um, so it didn't work out that way, but, you know, I do like fashion stuff. and I step out from time to time. Thanks for listening to our In Conversation podcast series. For more episodes, please visit women2.org.